I would like to share with you the results of our recent theoretical and experimental study that will lead to revision of our understanding of chemistry and our understanding of the world around us. The so-called discovery of forbidden chemistry. It has been expected for a long time that matter under pressure will display anomalous chemistry. And many new phenomena have already been found. Uh, some of them have been explained and some of them still wait for their explanation. But most importantly, we still lack models that would predictably uh, describe such uh, phenomena. It has to be said that most of matter in uh, the universe, most of planetary and stellar matter, is at uh, conditions of very high pressures. So these chemical changes are very important for understanding our universe. In planetary centers, uh, typically we have pressures of the order of 100 gigapascal or 1 million atmospheres. And such pressures already now can be obtained in the laboratory. One could also mention that 70 years ago, a Nobel Prize in Physics has been given to Percy Williams Bridgman for his pioneering works in high-pressure physics. But the first high-pressure experiment, as my colleague Vladimir Fortov has imaginatively described, has been performed and documented in the Bible, where uh, King David, at that time not yet king, uh, performed a shock experiment accelerating a projectile, a stone, into the target, the head of giant Goliath. And nowadays, high-pressure experiments are practiced in very many labs around the world. The key instrument for our work, however, is theory. We collaborate with experimentalists, but my group is developing and applying novel theoretical methods. And the key in this new area of discovering new chemistry and new materials is to be able to predict crystal structures of materials. Until recently, it has been believed that crystal structures are fundamentally unpredictable because of the extremely high combinatorial complexity of that problem. The number of crystal structures that are possible is so large, in principle even infinite, that sampling all of them and evaluating relative stability of all these different structural arrangements is impossible. However, we have formulated a new method based on the ideas of evolution that very efficiently samples the energy landscapes and goes to the most stable crystal structure in a finite and very small amount of time. Uh, one has to say that crystal structure and molecular structure are the most fundamental properties of matter. They determine the properties and behavior of atomic matter uh, and therefore are absolutely indispensable for understanding uh, chemical processes and materials performance. As I mentioned to you before, uh, until recently it was believed that crystal structures are fundamentally unpredictable and uh, editor-in-chief of Nature magazine at that time even provocatively asked who would guess that graphite and not diamond would be the most stable allotrope of carbon at normal conditions. Using our method we very easily predict that indeed it is graphite which is stable uh, at normal conditions. And if you increase pressure, we know from experiment that it is not graphite but diamond which will be stable. And this is indeed what we find very easily using our computational method. Here I will show you a sequence of structures, a very short sequence of structures, before we quickly obtain diamond as a stable structure. Initial structures are disordered, randomly produced, and then evolutionary algorithm uh, creates diamond from these structures. Here you see the diamond structure. And if we increase pressure even further to pressures above 1,000 gigapascals, in this simulation you will see results obtained at 2,000 gigapascals, you will see a completely different structure that becomes uh, more stable than diamond. Here you see this structure, the one which uh, succeeds to diamond at high pressure. This method has been used by us and by many other groups around the world uh, with great success to predict new states of matter, to predict new technologically useful materials, to predict new phenomena. Here is one of the most striking illustrations of such a successful prediction. The prediction that sodium at high pressure will become a transparent nonmetal. In the periodic system, 
we say that sodium belongs to the group of alkali metals. But under pressure, this alkali metal becomes a non-metal and it becomes transparent uh, and insulating, as you can see also on this uh, photograph from the experimental work. So sodium becomes very anomalous, very strange under pressure. What about sodium chloride or salt, commonly known salt, which normally has a structure which you see here on the screen. At high pressure, salt becomes crazy. And one of the structures, one of the many structures that sodium chloride adopts under pressure, uh, you see here on the screen. And this discovery has been made by uh, us together with Wei Wei Zhang, a visiting professor from China. Salt as we know it, we encounter it every day. We eat it every day. We mine it all over the world. And we know salt to be white, colorless, well crystallized, material. However, sometimes salt can be colored, for example, blue. And uh, an explanation for this is quite interesting. What classical chemistry tells us is that sodium and chlorine are very different atoms. Their electronegativity difference is so large that an essentially purely ionic bond will be formed. Sodium has one extra electron on top of the filled spherical electronic shell. Chlorine has one missing electron to achieve that filled closed electronic shell configuration. So what happens is that sodium, which does not keep its electron very tightly, donates the electron to chlorine. In the end, sodium attains charge plus one, chlorine attains charge minus one. And the only ratio in which these elements can combine is one to one, NaCl. That's exactly the chemical composition of our commonly known table salt. And the crystal structure of that table salt you see here on the screen. So the only compound, as I told you, based on the classical considerations is NaCl, the uh, commonly known rock salt or table salt. On the left hand side you see the correct structure of rock salt. You see alternation of positive and negative charges which in total give zero charge neutrality, which is a fundamental requirement for stability of crystal structures. On the right hand side, you see that I have replaced one of the negatively charged atoms with a positively charged atom. And this structure is certainly incorrect. This structure cannot be stable. Structures like that have a wrong ratio of sodium and chlorine, have the wrong ratio of plus and minus, and they are forbidden. However, Colored varieties of sodium chloride, which are known in nature, get their color from tiny errors in the sodium to chlorine ratio. Tiny errors which create defects and to maintain charge neutrality, a special electron, an extra electron, is um, localized in that structure. And that ultimately leads to the appearance of that color. So very small variations are already known even at normal conditions. What happens at high pressure was the topic of a special study performed by Wei Wei Zhang and me and several other collaborators. And we have predicted to our great astonishment that at even moderate pressures, such as about 20 gigapascals, new compounds begin to be formed, such as NaCl3, NaCl7, Na3Cl2, Na2Cl, and Na3Cl. This was predicted using a very sophisticated global searching algorithm developed by my group and quantum mechanical simulations. There is no simple model that would tell us that such compounds could be stable. There is no simple model that could explain to us why NaCl7 rather than NaCl8 or NaCl6 appears uh, on the phase diagram. Here you see the crystal structure of one of those newly discovered compounds, NaCl3, and its electronic structure, which tells us that this is a poor metal. So sodium chloride, already at reasonably low pressures, becomes 
chemically very complicated, new compounds are possible in that system, and many of these are metals. There are many anomalies that we have found in this system, in the system sodium chlorine. For example, the compound NaCl7 is very similar to NaCl3. The only difference is that one of the sodiums is replaced with chlorine. What a surprise it was for us that this chlorine atom in sodium chloride has a slightly positive charge. We expect that in sodium chloride, sodium will be the positively charged atom and chlorine will be the negatively charged atom. Here, however, we see that while most chlorines are negative, one chlorine atom is positive. And this totally disrupts our expectations. Na3Cl, for example, is also a very anomalous compound because here you see layers of pure sodium alternating with layers of sodium chloride. And this material is a very good two-dimensional conductor of electricity, two-dimensional metal. And such systems attract enormous attention in recent years. This prediction, of course, is very exotic. And we have asked our experimental colleague, Professor Goncharov from Carnegie Institution of Washington, to check this using his experimental techniques. And you can see that every single diffraction peak predicted by theory has indeed been seen in the newly synthesized material. To synthesize these materials, he had to mix sodium chloride with chlorine and apply pressure and temperature. And this way he got an ACL3. And also, in a separate experiment, he has mixed sodium chloride with pure sodium. And that, under pressure and with some heating, uh, gave him such materials as Na3Cl. Here you see that not only the diffraction pattern is reproduced perfectly, the predicted diffraction pattern is perfectly reproduced by the experiment, but also the high pressure behavior of the newly predicted materials. Here you can see the pressure volume curve for the commonly known sodium chloride. And you can see that theory, these colored lines, predict significant shifts of this line. And the shifts are reproduced perfectly by the experimental points. So this establishes the existence of new predicted sodium chlorides that are incompatible with conventional wisdom, with classical chemistry models. Sodium chloride cannot be just an exception, one exception among all the chemical systems. We believe that in very many chemical systems, typically under pressure, you will form unexpected counterintuitive chemical compounds. And every chemical system of technological or fundamental interest has to be sampled, has to be carefully studied to find these new compounds that we did not expect before. And indeed, the first system that we have looked at was magnesium oxygen. In this system, just like in sodium chloride, only one compound was uh, expected, MgO. But under pressure, we find MgO2, magnesium peroxide, and a very unexpected, very counterintuitive, Mg3O2. Magnesium oxygen system is very important for understanding planetary interiors. And it is possible that these new compounds will be present inside other planets. Now the new chapter of chemistry is born. Now the road is open. The road is open for big discoveries that can change our understanding of planetary interiors and can lead to technologically useful materials with exotic properties. I have already illustrated for you a material where a chlorine atom takes an uncharacteristic positive charge. I have already shown you a material where two-dimensional metallic conductivity is formed in a system as simple as sodium chloride. And careful exploration of other chemical systems will undoubtedly change our understanding of chemistry, change the way we make new materials, the way we discover new materials, and the way we understand the world where we live, the, the world with planets, stars, and extreme con conditions. To wrap up, I would like to give you this artistic uh, impression of this work, um, an illustration of the electron localization function in the newly discovered sodium chloride NaCl3, showing these beautiful kissing onions.
Thank you very much.